Today in the life of the church, we honor Our Lady under her title, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, based on the apparition to St. Simon Stock, the founder of the Carmelite Order, in which Our Lady concludes by, tell, by giving him a brown scapula, asking that all the members of the Carmelite Order be clothed in the scapula and also a form of it to be given to the lay people and it particularly is significant because the scapula signifies protection, for it was that garment worn over the good clothes so that when they, when they had to labor and get dirty, they simply would wash the scapula and no stain would touch the good clothing. And so it is symbolic that when we have received the good clothing of our baptism, it is Our Lady who will protect us from the stain. And indeed, it becomes very significant in the life of the church. <clears throat> For St. Simon Stock, before returning to England, visited Mount Carmel in the Holy Land, and it is a very significant place. Indeed, the Carmelites claim that the prophet Elijah is their true founder, for it was there that he did battle with the prophets of Baal, that is, with the culture of death. And in the conclusion of the battle, when the prophet Elijah emerges completely triumphant over the mass amounts of the prophets of Baal, a sign appears over the Mediterranean Sea in which one cloud forms above the bitter Mediterranean Sea in the form of a foot. And so it is precisely why the Carmelites emphasize the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary and her ruling over the mystical body as queen of heaven and earth. And so we take great confidence in this apparition and its significance for one of the things Our Lady promised St. Simon Stock that those who would die clothed in her scapula would not suffer the eternal fires of damnation. And indeed, it reveals many mysteries to us. Primary among them is the maternal protection of Our Lady in all times and in all tribulations. For ultimately, when the prophets of Baal were doing battle with Elijah, their purpose was to steal from the chosen people the true revelation. And in today's gospel, we, we see that revelation fulfilled. For Simeon declares in a public fashion that this Christ child is the one who was foretold to our first parents of old, the one who in union with his mother will crush the head of the serpent. And so it is they who will do battle for us against Satan and all his minions and all cultures who seek to steal from us that which is mo most precious. And so Our Lady of Mount Carmel particularly becomes significant in our times for there is a concerted effort about in order to steal in order to steal Christ from the minds and hearts of all souls our lord is assailed in every possible fashion that is imagined his divinity is denied uh, he is reduced to being merely a man if indeed as some would say <coughs> he even existed at all and so it is our lady whom we must turn to in order for her in order to receive her protection most especially in order to preserve that gift which we, we have received in our baptism and that gift that is strengthened through every sacramental reception, that is, the gift of Christ himself. And so it is truly significant in, 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 in a, a, truly a significant apparition in laying before us the complete and total protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary and how she looks caringly over all the members of the mystical body, preserving them in the purity of faith and seeing them through this life as a good mother would do until finally they may, seek, they may gain that union with God the Father. And so let us not become of that mentality or uh, that modern mentality that would reduce Marian apparitions, those approved apparitions, to mere manifestations of the, faith, of the faith of the faithful. For we have 
good, solid evidence to prove that these, that these events truly took place and they bring to significant certain doctrines about Our Lady. And so they must, in a certain sense, be looked at, looked at as a whole so that we understand the complete universal mission of the Mother of God over the mystical body and her mission to gain all the peoples for the kingdom of Christ. And so... She is truly our protectress because she protects us most especially from Satan, whose head ultimately she will be given the grace to crush at the end of time. And so, through the members of her mystical body and guided by her protection, she uses us as her instrument. For it is often forgotten that when she appeared to St. Simon Stock, she asked also that souls would consecrate themselves to her, and so the message of Mount Carmel is really fulfilled in the gift that St. Maximilian Mary Colby gave to the members of the church. And like the miraculous medal, the brown scapula can become a sign of our total consecration to the Mother of God, that is, entrusting ourselves completely to her maternal protection, clothing ourselves in her scapula so that like her, the stain of sin can no longer touch us. We know very clearly that it will always touch us in a manner that it never touched the Blessed Virgin Mary, for she could not even suffer those internal temptations that often tempt us away, that is, those weapons that the devil uses in order to, to steal the Christ child from us. And then we also have to deal with our own weakness in which we are inclined, inclined to give him up. And so let us always and everywhere turn to Our Lady, for she will do battle for us as the prophet Elijah did battle for the chosen people. But unlike Elijah, Our Lady is untouchable. For when Elijah banished the prophets of Baal, he became afraid and sought refuge in order to escape the wrath of Jezebel. Our Lady fears no man and fears no woman, and so she truly is that valiant woman, and she truly reigns. And it is significant that under the title of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, we see developed in its fullness the true meaning of the doctrine of Our Lady's Assumption. She was assumed into heaven, there to reign as queen of heaven and earth, over every aspect of the mystical body, the church triumphant, the church suffering, and the church militant. And so she truly is our protectress, and she will keep Satan and our own weaknesses from stealing the Christ child from us, and then allow us to go forth and seek to give back to the world the one who came into the world in order to redeem it, that is the Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ. And so he will truly be for the rise and the fall of many. For insofar as we respond to the incarnation and we live in an age that even denies the very possibility of an incarnation, but it is how will we respond to this? If we deny it, then we will suffer the eternal fires of damnation. If we enter into that mystery of the Lord's coming to us in his humanity and place ourselves under the protection of the Immaculate Virgin Mary, then ultimately we will, we will, we will receive that reward which we must always strive for and always have a true theological hope for, not a merely human hope, but a true hope in which God is truly faithful to his promises and that one of the promises is that he gave to us his mother as our protector. He bequeathed to us to her and her to us so that we may truly fear nothing in this life, but only fear losing our good God for all eternity in the life to come. And so let us honor Our Lady today as Our Lady of Mount Carmel, which particularly points out her role as the maternal protectress of every member of the mystical body and of the whole human race, drawing all constantly to union with Christ and to Christ crucified in this life in order that we may enter into the glory of the resurrection in the life to come.
responses, Father, through the loving